So if you have been following the channel, you know that I have been using the Anpro 2 mechanical keyboard as my main peripheral. However, a couple of months back, a company by the name of Abconcore, I think I'm saying that the right way, asked me if I wanted to check out some of their stuff, and so they sent out this. Yo guys, this is Luke, and this is the Abconcore AR87. Now let me preface this review by saying I've only used a handful of mechanical keyboards in my time. However, after using the AR87, I immediately put away the Anpro 2, and while I still love that keyboard, there's just something about the AR87 that makes the entire experience feel so smooth and premium. I mean, even in the unboxing, Abconcore is pulling out all the stops. The AR87 comes in a really nice hard shell carrying case. It also includes a keycap puller, brush, and braided cable, which I thought was a really, really nice touch. Oftentimes, you don't really see a braided cable included with a nice keyboard. Now, the first thing I noticed about this keyboard was the weight. This thing is heavy. Oh, this is heavy. It comes in at around 6.8 pounds, which compared to my Anpro 2 is about five times heavier. It's completely housed out of CNC'd aluminum, and it includes PBT keycaps with die sublimination legends printed on. Now, these keycaps are not going to last you as long as double shot PBT keycaps, but in my experience, they feel about as good and have a very solid quality to them. Over on the sides, you'll notice a single RGB LED, and while this keyboard doesn't have any accompanying software, if you press the FN plus the page up keys, you can cycle through different color modes of the RGB to match your desk. Over on the back is a single USB-C port for power and connecting it to the computer, and while it's right in the middle, I personally would have liked to see this on the left side, as that's a more typical placement for the USB-C port and honestly just looks better with a space cable. But that said, it still looks great on my desk and honestly doesn't bother me that much. Now obviously keyboard switches are highly subjective in preference, but for this keyboard I went with the Cherry MX Brown switches, and while the Anpro 2 has Gatoron Brown switches, these switches for whatever reason feel far superior. The Cherry MX Brown switches feel tactile and tight, and the built-in stabilizers do a pretty good job of keeping the keys from wobbling. Now they could definitely use some lube, however for a factory setting they do the job just fine. Now, I don't know if it's because there's an aluminum housing around the PCB or what, but compared to other brown switches I've used, this is by far the best feeling and sounding. In addition to that, the keycaps are low profile and are about 1.4 millimeters thick. Now, because the keyboard is fully made of aluminum, there are no feet added to this keyboard. That said, there is about an eight degree slant to the keyboard, which I found more than comfortable to type on. Also, if you look at their website, there seems to be a bit of silencing foam in between the PCB and the aluminum, which makes for a supposedly quieter experience. Lastly, this keyboard is a 10 keyless keyboard, which means you're not going to get a number pad, but I actually prefer this because it keeps the keyboard profile smaller. In the future, I will probably end up replacing the keys on the right and use them for multimedia keys as I rarely use those functions anyways. Now, unfortunately, this keyboard isn't perfect and there are a few issues. Because it's a fairly unknown brand, there isn't any first party software to remap the keys or macros. Also, while there is included RGB on the sides, there's no software to control it. And I also would have loved to see some RGB backlighting in this keyboard, but I can't really knock it too much for not having it. Lastly, the PCB is not hot swappable, which means if you want to change out the switches yourself, you will have to desolder the board. But that's not a huge deal, and if you're comfortable with building keyboards, you can just do that yourself. But do keep that in mind if you go to purchase this one. Alright, so if you're watching this video, you probably want to know, should you get this keyboard or not? And I say, it depends. If we're strictly talking about quality of life, then yes, 100%, this keyboard is amazing, go ahead and purchase it right now, put it in the cart. But if we're talking about price, then that might be a different story. But let's talk about that a little bit later. Now, in terms of quality of life, not only is it fully made out of aluminum and has some of the best feeling switches I've ever personally used, but it also has two other features that I think are really worth mentioning. 
Firstly, this keyboard has full N key rollover, which if you don't know what that means, basically you can press any number of keys down at the same time and the keyboard will register each and every input simultaneously. This is great because many lower end keyboards only allow for three or four simultaneous inputs at a time. Now, if you're an average user, chances are you won't ever need this, but it's still really nice to have. And second, this keyboard has a polling rate of 1000 Hertz. If you're not familiar with polling rates, a polling rate is how fast the keyboard refreshes for new inputs. Most lower end keyboards have a polling rate of about 125 Hertz, which comes to around eight milliseconds of refresh. But the AR87 has a polling rate of 1000 Hertz, which means it refreshes literally every one millisecond. This is incredibly fast, and if you're a gamer, then you know this means this keyboard will virtually have no input lag. So that brings us on over to price. And while Amcon Core doesn't have any prices listed on their website, on Amazon, this keyboard lists for around $240, and it's been that way pretty much since its release. As such, this keyboard is pretty expensive, and there are definitely other options out there for cheaper, such as the Ducky 1 Too Mini, the Anpro 2, or even the Keychron K2, just to name a few. However, if you really want one of the most well-made and best-feeling keyboards that I've ever used, then the AR87 is a no-brainer and would definitely add miles to your work-from-home setup. Right, so just a quick update for y'all. Obviously, I'm in a different space. I moved and I decided to make some more content. So I'll be streaming over on Twitch Monday and Wednesday nights, probably 2D platformers or something like that. And feel free to give it a follow. It's twitch.tv slash technominute. Link will be in the description. Anyways, big thanks to Abgrincore for sending this device out. If there are any other similar products you want me to check out, don't hesitate to let me know down below. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you didn't like it, well, hit that dislike button twice. Anyways, this is Luke with Techno Minute, and until next time, peace.